recording. General Mills, makers of Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions, and Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, presents The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Hail Silver. Hooray! Ride that frog. Who is it, Lone Ranger? That champion, Bob Burroughs. Watch him stay in that saddle. Well, he sure makes it look easy. Well, you know it isn't. Bronze busting is hard to do, harder to learn. Take Bob Burroughs. I know he started riding as a youngster. He took his share of spills, but he kept at it. And he kept in condition, including eating his Wheaties. In fact, now that Bob Burroughs is a champion, he still eats Wheaties. Plenty of practice, plenty of the right food. That's sound advice for anyone hoping to be a champion. It sure is, Lone Ranger, because champions are made, not born. And there's a good, solid reason why Wheaties can give you the energy to go a long, long way. It's this. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. A whole kernel of wheat. The cereal grain that's famous for energy. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Shortly after 9 o'clock, Roxy Duffy, his brother Knife, and two other outlaws drew rein in the darkness behind the bank in Gila Bend. As they dismounted, Roxy said, We're in luck, boys. Nobody saw us come into town. No. Chocto, get that iron bar from your saddlebag and use it to force the lock on the bank door. All right, boss. Knife, you and Chocto come into the bank with me. What about Blaze, Roxy? He'll stay with the horses and stay in guard till we come out with the cash. Good idea. That way you'll be able to sound the alarm if anything goes wrong. Yeah. Well, we'll be depending on you, Blaze, so keep your eyes open. Don't worry, Roxy. I'll do my part. Good. I'll start to work on the door. Go ahead. I hope Choctaw will be able to get the safe open without making a lot of noise. We've already found out about the safe in this bank. It'll be as easy to open as a tin can. Are you sure? It's not like the new ones they have in the East. This is an old junker that should have been thrown away a long time ago. There's never been a robbery around here, so I reckon the banker thought it was all right to go on using it. <laughs> you know, we'll teach him a lesson. Yeah, if you're right, we should have no trouble. No trouble at all. Yeah, unless some jughead comes along and sees the horses back here. It gets suspicious. Well, I know what to do if that happens, Roxy. <clears throat> hey, Roxy, the door's open. And let's go. Well, As the three thieves worked in the bank, Dr. John North approached town. He was returning from a sick call at a nearby ranch, and as his faithful horse drew his light wagon along the familiar shortcut that led home, Doc looked forward to a hot meal and a quiet evening. His horse, Andy, was just as eager to reach the comfort of food and home. Come here, boy. He cut into an alley behind the cafe at the edge of town and moved past the back door of the hotel, the sheriff's office, several boarding houses and restaurants, and the rear of the bank, which was just a few doors from his own barn. Then Doc noticed the four horses, round hitched behind the bank. 
A moment later, he heard a sharp command. Hold up. Hey, what the... Hold up, or I'll throw you out of that way. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Now hit the ground and keep your hands up. It's all right, all right. I know better than to argue with a gun. Uh, who are you? Someone you'll be sorry you met. What? Too bad you came along just now. Come on, hurry up. We're all set, Blaze. Shot to open the safe and we can get What the use is this? What happened, Blaze? The gent was driving his wagon past here when he spotted her horses. I stopped him. Uh, hey, that's bad. Plenty bad. So you're bank robbers. Who are you? That needn't concern you. You ought to shoot him, Roxy. You know, I shot to bring everyone in town to investigate. Uh, if gun plays out, what do we do with him? Crack him on the head. Right. As Blaze strode forward with his gun raised to strike a blow, Doc stepped back. Realizing that he might be able to prevent the escape of the bandits, he decided to risk running for shelter. He turned quickly and raced for cover, shouting, Help! Hey, Help! you bank robbers! Stop, oh, that's you! He's getting away. He's heading for the side of the building. Let him have it. He's out of sight. Did you get it? Yeah, but I don't know how badly he's hit. But, hey, sounds like the whole town's turning out. Come on up. Get going and travel fast. Get him. Get him. As the outlaws heard their horses, Sheriff Tom Vesley opened the back door of his office half a block from the bank. He saw the outlaws approaching and drew back out of sight until they passed the office. Then the sheriff opened fire. As he triggered his guns, Doc North breathlessly entered the front door of the office. Sheriff! 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 Thank you, Sheriff! Oh, you're doing the shooting. Yeah, but my gun's empty now. What happened to your arm, Doc? Uh, those poor cats gunned me. It's a flesh wound. Well, I hit one of them in the back, but they're out of range now. I'll reload. I heard the shooting outside when I opened the back door. I saw those fellas riding away. They robbed the bank. Well, I'll go after them as soon as I get my horse in the livery stable. Yeah, I'll walk to the stable with you. What about your wound? Oh, it's not serious, Sheriff. You better take care of it. But first, tell me all you know about the holdup, Doc. Doc had barely finished his brief narrative of what had happened when they saw Jim Ellis approaching on the run. As the heavyset banker neared them, the sheriff called. Hey there, Mr. Ellis. Hey, who? Oh, oh, it's you, Sheriff, and Doc. What's the shooting mean? Four men robbed the bank. Robbed them? Oh, great Scott, I'll go there and see how much they stole. Yeah, we'll go with you. After the banker completed a hasty examination of the safe, the sheriff asked, How much was stolen? It'll take time to get the exact amount, but they took at least $15,000 cash, as well as several thousand dollars in gold. Hey, hey, that's a lot of money. Sheriff, you've got to recover it. I'll do my best, Ellis. I'll recruit a posse and we'll pick up the trail of those fellows behind the bank. Two deputies and several townsmen joined the sheriff behind the bank and volunteered for posse duty. When they found the tracks they were looking for, each man left to saddle his own mount. Returning to the meeting place behind the bank, they began the task of trailing the four thieves. All right, men. Let's go. Get up. The tracks were clear and easy to follow in the moonlight until they reached the Apache Hill, some distance from town. There, the tracks were lost on hard ground. Well, boys, one thing sure. Those crooks are in these hills somewhere. Yeah, but where? How will we find them? We'll spread out. Cover the ground carefully. Sooner or later, the polecats we're after will ride over some soft ground where their tracks will show. Uh, Tracks will be easy to recognize. One of those horses has a worn shoe. That's right, Hank. All of you be on the lookout for it. All right, Sheriff. Get up there. Come on. 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 Who? Who there? Who, boy? The sheriff was alone when he saw the tracks of two horses on the trail. He dismounted and studied them. Hmm. Neither one of these horses has a worn shoe. Deciding that the outlaws may have split up in the hills... The sheriff made up his mind to follow the tracks. He mounted quickly. Easy there, steady. Get it back. Come on. Though Tom Bustry didn't know it, the tracks he followed were those of the great horse Silver and Toto's paint horse Scout. The masked man and his Indian friend were camped in a well-concealed area in the Apache Hills. The fire was low, and they were about to turn in for the night 
when they heard the sound of movement in the underbrush a short distance away. They listened for a moment. Then Tonto said, Kimosabe, someone come this way. He's moving carefully. I'm not careful enough. Me hear him. There goes the shelter of those trees. Watch for him. I can see fire and horses. Yes, but we'll have a chance to see him before he finds us. Come on, Tonto. Uh -uh. Tom Bestry's guns were drawn when he stepped into the ember-lit clearing. He looked at the two horses tethered nearby and at the gear on the ground. Yeah. Then suddenly... Up your gun, Sheriff. Hey, what the... You covered. We have the shelter of trees and you're a perfect target. So, so uh, I'll host to my guns. There. Now show yourselves. Gladly. What? Your mask. Yes, and you're wearing a sheriff's badge. I'm Tom Bestry, Sheriff of Gila Bend. Who are you and what's the mask mean? It doesn't put me on the wrong side of the law. No one but a law dodger would cover his face. I'm not an outlaw. I don't believe it. But I do know you're not the outlaws I'm after right now. What? As soon as I saw your horses, I knew you two hadn't robbed the bank. Well, who did? Four fellas pulled the robbery. I lost their trail in the foothills. When I found the tracks of your horses, I figured they'd split into pairs. I expected to find two of them here, but... Yeah, I reckon I followed the wrong horses. Isn't that right? Now it's your turn to answer questions. About that man. Tonto and I came here because we heard the Duffy brothers and their gang had been seen in this part of the country. Duffy brothers, huh? Yeah, I've heard of them. So have a lot of other lawmen. They're wanted for a number of bank robberies and two murders. Yeah, what do you want with them? A chance to put them in prison where they belong. So you have a grudge against them? You still think I'm an outlaw? Yeah, well, I have no reason to think otherwise. Perhaps this letter will change your mind. Here, read it. What's a letter got to do with it? Hey, this is on official paper. The seal of the state's at the top. You'll recognize the signature. The governor. Great day. Yeah, let's see. It says to whom it may concern. This will identify the... Tom Vestry read the letter in wide-eyed surprise. Then he studied the signature carefully and the seal at the top of the heavy bond stationery. As he folded it, he said, I reckon it's no forgery. Here you are, mister. Oh, thanks. According to that letter, you'll further identify yourself by the bullets in your gun belt. Oh, here's one, Sheriff. Oh, thanks. It's silver, all right. Now you believe, masked man, Lone Ranger? I believe it, and, and I'm proud to meet you. I'm sorry I made a mistake. When I saw the mask, I... I, thought... I, uh, I don't blame you, Sheriff. I carry that letter because many lawmen react to the mask the same way. Now, suppose you share our campfire and tell us more about the bank robbery. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen, young Otto on his way to fame found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Touchdown, Otto. Let's go, boy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of Champions. Now to continue. When the sheriff finished his account of the robbery in Gila Bend, the Lone Ranger asked... Sheriff, did you see the faces of those riders? Well, not well enough to describe them, but I'd recognize their horses. Why? 
I wonder if they were the Duffy brothers and their friends. What makes you think they might be? Your description of the way the safe was opened. Duffy has a cracksman named Choctaw who might have done that job. Hmm. Tuttle, we'll need Scout and Silver. Uh, let me get him. What are you going to do? Join your manhunt. On our way to this campsite, Tuttle and I passed an old shack in the stand of evergreen trees. Several men have been living there recently. We saw their gear when we stopped this afternoon to investigate. You think they pulled the bank robbers? We found the tracks of four horses outside the shack. One of those horses had a worn shoe. Then they are our men, the ones I've been trailing. They aren't the worn shoe as a coincidence that needs explaining. Scout, Silver, ready? Good, we'll head for the shack now. I'll look for my boys. We'll meet you there. Fine, easy, sir. Come on, on, Toto. You ready? Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Get back, come on. Later that night, the masked man and Toto were traveling uphill. They were about two miles from the old shack when they heard a rider approaching. They threw rain. Oh, 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 oh. Look, take plenty big chance riding horse so fast downhill over ground like this. Whoever he is, he's in a hurry. Maybe a sheriff. The sheriff was to meet us at the shack. Oh, that's right. We move back off the trail until that rider comes into view. Me savvy. Come on, Silver. Come, fella. The Lone Ranger and Tonto moved from the uneven rock-strewn trail to the cover of screening brush and trees. From their place of concealment, they watched the approaching rider recklessly spur his horse downhill. Then he reached a place where the trees bordering the trail thinned. Brilliant moonlight sharply illuminated the horse and rider. The Lone Ranger recognized the man in the saddle. Tonto is Roxy Duffy. Uh, let me see him. him kill horse riding like that. He's also risking his own worthless neck. We'll do the horse and the law a favor right now. Uh-huh. We'll stop Duffy before he rides past us. All right, Duffy, draw rein. Oh, well, oh, oh. Who are you? We've met before. I've no time to waste. So if you've anything to say, step out where I can see you and talk fast. I'll show myself. As for talking, I've only one thing to say. Uh, you've reached the end of the trail. You? What are you doing in these parts? Not only I followed you from Indian territory. But we covered our tracks. You did a good job of it. We lost your tracks. And how did you... We had to make inquiries about you after we lost your trail. We learned that you, your brother, and your two pals have been seen around here. Now, of all the luck... Don't try reaching for your gun. I got away from you once, and I'll do it again. Don't reach for that holster. I'm going to get you. Now dismount. My hand is creasing. You loco, gopher gun. I wouldn't have tried out drawing you, but I I had to risk it. It was my only chance. Hit the ground. All right. But... Now, listen, mister. Where are the rest of your men? I, I... Duffy, you don't have to talk. This trail leads directly to a shack in the hills above. You must have come from there. All right, take you to the gun, Toto. Uh, let me get it. Was the bank robbery in Gila Bend your work? Well, I... Did Choctaw crack that safe? Uh, now, listen, mister, I'll talk. I'll tell everything you want to know. If you'll help me get a doctor first. My brother's hurt. Where is he? At the shack. Blazing Choctaw with him. But they don't know how to treat bullet wounds. Knife will die of that law dog sled. The bank guard you murdered in Big Rock had wives and children, Roxy. Now that your brother's life's in danger, you may understand how hard it is to lose someone you love. I didn't kill those guards. Blaze and Choctaw did the shooting. You're as guilty as they are. Knife's my brother. I can't let him die. Mr. Please. Toto. Uh-huh. Hurry to town and bring the doctors to the shack at once. Man's life may depend on him reaching the shack quickly. Me savvy. Ride fast, engine, and don't waste any time. Oh, me hurry. Here, Scout. Here, Father. Now, where's the loot from the bank robbery? In my saddlebags. I, I didn't leave it at the shack because I couldn't trust Chalco and Blaze to stay there once they had their share. Shut him up, Scout! Yeah, they go to the shack now. Hey, you know something about bullet wounds, mister. Maybe you'll be able to help now. I'll do what I can for him until the doctor arrives. After I've dealt with the rest of your gang... Hit the saddle, Roxy, and don't try to make a break. Easy. I'll not make trouble, mister. I'm licked, and I know it. Yes, sir. Easy. Steady, fella. All right, go on. Get it. Come on, sir. Roxy Duffy and the Lone Ranger reached the lighted shack a short time later. Oh, 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 oh,
When you reach the door, don't try to sound an alarm. I promise I'll not try anything. To make sure you don't, I'll have my gun pointed at your back. You don't have to do that. I'm disarmed. As soon as the door is open, move into the shack and step aside. Fast. I know. You're playing a surprise, suppose. Right. I'll lead the way. Roxy followed orders. He opened the door and stepped inside. The masked man was behind him with a colt in each hand. Hey, what's up, masked man? He's covering you two, so don't make the mistake I did and try reaching for your guns. Roxy, you double cross. I knew you shouldn't have risked showing yourself in town. We told you you were local to Sheriff's Hall. Sure, but you had to go for a duck. I had to save Knight. Roxy. Roxy. Take it easy, Knight. The doc will be here. Keep your hands up, Choctaw. You too, Blaze. Roxy, we have you to thank for this. I didn't want Matt to die. Because you wanted to save him, Blaze, and I'll go to jail. Maybe hang. Well, I'll not be captured. Don't try it, Chuck. I'll try anything. No. A silver bullet smashed oh, Chuck's weapon as it cleared the holster. Blaze was reaching for his own gun when the sheriff looked through the window. Raise your hands, Blaze, or I'll break your arm. You'd better do as he says, Blaze. My deputy's now back in the mask, man. These are your bank robbers, Sheriff. I recognize their horses outside. These fellas, the Duffy Gang? Yes, Roxy, Knife, Blaze, and Choctaw. You'll find the loot from the bank in Roxy's saddlebag. I have my gun ready, Sheriff. Now, uh, hold it and bring out your handcuffs. We'll put bracelets on these critters. Hey, keep them covered, Sheriff, while I examine yeah. the man on the bunk. Right. Who's he? Knife Duffy. Your bullet wounded him. I figured I hit one of those fellas. Uh, uh, you, the masked man. Yes, that's right, Duffy. Here, I'll look at your wound. Uh, yeah. Caught up with us at last. Huh? Maybe it's just as well, Knife. We didn't have a chance to get away with him and his engine pal on our trail. We, we'll go to jail. Huh? I'll settle for that. How is he, mister? The doctor will be able to remove the bullet. Then I think with rest and care, he'll live to go on trial. <laughs> I never figured I'd consider that good news. <laughs> Will the sheriff let us wait here till the doctor comes? Is Doc coming here? Tonto went for him, Sheriff. If you don't need me, I'll ride with your deputies and two of the prisoners to meet Tonto. Well, that suits me, mister. I'll stay here with the duffies. Are you ready to travel, deputy? Yes, sir. All right, you two, move. Yes. I may see you later, Sheriff. I hope so, mister. Oh, well, Duffy, no more for you to do but sit down and wait for the doc. Just remember, you and your brother are covered. I'll sit on the bunk, Chef. Roxy. Yeah, Knife? Blaze and... Blaze and Choctaw blame you for being captured. Knife. It's not my fault the law caught up with us. They should blame the Lone Ranger. I don't do Cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You know about Cheerios. How good Cheerios taste. And how this wonderful toasted oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O is so good for you. A Cheerios and milk breakfast really starts the day right. It's real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. They help to give you healthy nerves and muscles. So have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.
Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.